Big or small, every country is an important part of the global community, and today's subject is no different. On this episode, we explore all things about the Bahamas, and you'll be amazed at all the things that happened on this tiny island nation with less than 400,000 people. In this video, we will learn the following about the Bahamas and so much more. What body of water are the Bahamas really in? What popular celebration among English-speaking islands originated in the Bahamas? How did the trade of red hats and beads for parrots and darts lead to a world-changing event? And what's a conky joe, and where could I find one? Answers to these questions and so much more will be swimming throughout the episode. Ready? Let's do this. First things first, despite popular belief, the Bahamas are not a part of the Caribbean. They reside in the North Atlantic Ocean, southeast of Florida and northeast of Cuba. With that said, it is often geopolitically designated as a Caribbean nation. I mean, in terms of regions, where else would you put it? Slightly smaller than the state of Connecticut, it ranks 160th of all of the countries in the world in land size. Located directly on the Tropic of Cancer, the Bahamas has a semi-tropical or subtropical marine climate, which is moderated by the warm waters of the Gulf Stream. That just sounds pleasant. The Bahamas have around 700 islands, though only 30 of them are inhabited with two-thirds of the Bahamian population living on New Providence Island alone, home to its capital and largest city, Nassau. According to my research, there are two theories on how the Bahamas got its name. The first is more popular and the other one is right. The popular belief holds that the area was named Baja Mar by the Spanish, meaning shallow water. But the correct answer is that the Bahamas got its name from the indigenous Lucayan name Bahama, meaning large upper middle island. The name was used by the Lucayans for the island of Grand Bahama, and over time it became the name for all of the Bahamian islands. In terms of geographic features, the world's second deepest blue hole, Dean's Blue Hole, can be found in the Bahamas on Long Island not that Long Island. The Bahamas are also home to one of the few pink sand beaches in the world on Harbor Island. Featured on the Travel Channel's World's Best Beaches segment in March 2005, the pale pink color of the sand comes from microscopic coral insects known as foraminifera, which have a bright pink or red shell full of holes through which extends pseudopodia. Don't worry, I'm not sure what that means either, but the insect uses it to attach itself and feed. And finally, the Bahamas is home to Andros Barrier Reef, one of the largest barrier reefs in the world. I can't say for sure where it ranks due to conflicting reports, ranking between 3rd and 6th depending on where you look. Either way, Andros Reef, just off the Bahamas' largest island of the same name, extends 140 miles and runs parallel to the east coast of Andros. It ranges in depth from 8 feet deep on the island side to up to 6,000 feet deep on the ocean side due to residing in the tongue of the ocean an area with deeper water that separates Andros from New Providence Island. The reef has 164 species of fish and the coral is famous for its deep water sponges and large schools of red snapper. Let's go to In 1927, Bahamian H.C. Christie invented and patented a disc that could be attached to sponges that grow in the ocean, which was a huge business in the Bahamas at the time. To solve the problem of declining sponges off the coast of the Bahamas, Christie learned to cut up a sponge in 30 to 40 pieces, something you can't do to most animals if you want them to survive. In attaching them to the disc to identify territory, the owner of the sponge, and the date it was put in the sea. Although they were live sponges, being altered by humans obligated them to be identified as artificial sponges, which is different from synthetic sponges. With colorful costumes and high-spirited dance moves, Junka Nu originated in the Bahamas centuries ago. Similar in some ways to Carnival and different in others, it is a street parade with music, dance, and costumes that happens across many islands in the English-speaking Caribbean every Boxing and New Year's Day. Those involved can spend months preparing for the celebration, which is often accompanied by the sounds of whistles, cowbells, and horns to the beat of goatskin drums. How it all started is unknown, but of course there are plenty of theories. The most popular belief is that it evolved from the days of slavery. The slaves of the Bahamas were given three days off during the Christmas holidays and they used it to party their tails off. Established in 1990 by Dr. Paul Gruber, the Bimini Shark Lab has been at the forefront of shark and ray research. Some of the specialties of the lab include shark behavior, anatomy, sensory systems, tracking, and shark repellents. 
Those working at the lab have been a part of numerous shark shows, featuring often on Discovery Channel's Shark Week. Rake and Scrape is a musical style that comes from the Bahamas. It combines African musical elements with European musical elements to create a sound comparable to other Caribbean music. While remaining distinct, it is characterized by the use of the saw tool as the primary instrument. And finally, the popular drink the Bahama Mama was created in the Bahamas, though who invented it and when are up for debate. There are two distinct types of the drink, one with coffee liqueur and one with grenadine. Let's move on and drink up the history of the Bahamas. Give me something, something good. The original people of the Bahamas were the Lucayans, a branch of the Taino people who arrived between 500 and 800 AD from other islands of the Caribbean. Recorded history of the islands began with the arrival of Christopher Columbus on October 12, 1492, his first stop in the Americas. It was on an island the natives called Guanahani. Although there are a number of theories regarding the exact island he first made landfall on, most believe it to be San Salvador, previously named Watling Island. During his first meeting, Columbus and his people gave the Lucayans glass beads and red hats. The Lucayans in turn gave them things like parrots, cotton threads, and darts, and thus began the worldwide Colombian exchange. While trading of hats and parrots seems rather trivial, it's widely acknowledged as one of the most important moments in world history. While Columbus didn't discover for the Americas, as is often told. I mean, how do you discover a land with people on it? And wasn't even the first European to set foot in the new lands. It was his trip that began the wave of Europeans exploring the Americas and taking the land for themselves. For better or worse, the world has never been the same. There were an estimated 40,000 Lucayans living in the Bahamas the day Columbus and his crew landed on Guanahani. Columbus kidnapped several Lucayans and took them back to Spain at the end of his first voyage. Eight years later, the namesake of the Americas, Amerigo Vespucci, kidnapped another 232 Lucayans and took them back to Spain as slaves. Over the next decade or so, the Lucayans were taken from their homes and sent to work on the island of Hispaniola as slaves. The islands were then uninhabited for 130 years. In 1648, a group from Bermuda called the Company of Adventurers for the Plantation of the Islands of Eleutheria, you think they could have come up with something shorter, sailed to the Bahamas to found an English colony. Bermuda had become overcrowded and the vacant Bahamas offered both religious and political freedom and economic opportunity. In 1666, other settlers from Bermuda settled on the island of New Providence and it quickly became the center of everything for the Bahamas, a distinction it still has today. The early settlers continued to live much as they had in Bermuda by fishing, hunting turtles, whales, and seals. But the most lucrative job on the island was salvaging shipwrecks. Their ship salvaging led them into direct conflict with the Spanish, and when the Spanish Spanish raided the Bahamas, the Bahamians hired privateers to attack Spanish ships. This is a good time to explain the difference between a privateer and a pirate. Privateers are commissioned by a country to attack and plundered foreign ships. Pirates basically do the same thing without permission. The Spanish War of Succession led to the need for a lot of privateers and with no functioning government, the Bahamas became known as the Privateers Republic for 11 years, with its main base at Nassau. War ended in 1714, but some privateers were slow to get the news, or reluctant to accept it, and went back into piracy. One estimate puts at least 1,000 pirates in the Bahamas in 1713. Nassau then became a pirate's republic and became home to some of history's most famous pirates, including Blackbeard, Henry Jennings, Benjamin Hornigold, Charles Vane, and Calico Jack Rackham. To clean up the mess, King George appointed Woods Rogers as governor of the Bahamas and offered a pardon to any pirate that turned himself into the governor within a year. Some accepted the pardon, while others did not. Rogers employed the pardon former pirates, most notably Benjamin Hornigold, to hunt down the remaining pirates to great effect. The golden age of piracy was over by 1726, though its legacy lives on. Arg. During the American Revolution, the Bahamas was attacked by the Americans several times due to the Bahamas being controlled by the British. After being taken over by the Spanish in 1782, an expedition led by Andrew DeVoe retook the Bahamas for those loyal to Britain in 1783. After losing the American Revolution, the British issued land grants to American loyalists who were in exile from the newly established United States. Most Bahamians today are descended from the loyalist slaves brought to the islands during that time. 
After Spain ceded Florida to the United States in the 1820s, hundreds of African slaves and black Seminoles escaped from Florida fearing enslavement. And when the British emancipated the slaves in most of their colonies, the islands became a haven for runaway slaves on the mainland. Although you would think there would be a happy ending for the Africans, with emancipation came rigid racial tears which led to the unequal distribution of wealth and power. This disparity lasted well into the 1940s. In 1911, there was a movement to make Bahamas a part of Canada. Although the movement enjoyed the support of many in Nassau and from the head of Sun Life, a Canadian insurance company, the movement failed. Likely due to the British government's opposition to uniting a predominantly black colony with a predominantly white country. On a lighter note, the creation of a Canadian Bahamian accent would have been interesting to hear, eh? Summarizing the rest up, the Bahamas became an independent commonwealth realm within the Commonwealth of Nations on July 10, 1973. Sir Milo Butler was appointed the first Governor General of the Bahamas, with Sir Lyndon Pinling working as Prime Minister until 1992. I bet you want to know more about the Bahamian people. So do I. Over 90% of Bahamians self-identify as being black, while 5% identify as white, with 2% identifying as mixed. The African heritage of the Bahamas is diverse, with ancestry coming from all along the western African coast, with people coming from, in descending order, West Central Africa, the Bight of Biafra, Sierra Leone, the Bight of Benin, the Windward Coast, Senegambia, and the Gold Coast, making the Bahamians a mix of many cultures from the African continent. Africans came to the Bahamas for a number of reasons. Besides coming with slave owners from Bermuda in the 17th century, many of the ethnic Africans were brought to the Bahamas from the United States as slaves of British loyalists after the American Revolution, most of which were of the Gullah peoples on the coast of Georgia and the Carolinas. Some earned their freedoms and immigrated to the Bahamas by fighting for the British during the American Revolutionary War as members of the Ethiopian Regiment. Regiment. And yet others were brought straight from Africa until the British outlawed the slave trade in 1807, after which close to 7,000 Africans were resettled in the Bahamas after being freed from slave ships by the Royal Navy. Bahamians of European descent are often referred to as conks, a name that is also used for people of white Bahamian descent in Florida. Today, a nickname used for white Bahamians are conky joes, a term that can be negative or affectionate, largely dependent on the reason. They make up the majority of the district's Spanish wells, located on St. George's Key and Russell Island. White Bahamians are also a significant minority on Long Island, the Abaco Islands, and of course on New Providence Island. Bahamian Olympians have won 16 medals the most of any country with under a million people with all coming in athletics and sailing. The most recent gold medal winners include Stephen Gardiner, who won the men's 400-meter race in 2020, along with Shawnee miller Uibo, who won 400-meter gold in 2016 and 2020. Other famous Bahamians include musical artists the Baja Men, lead singer of the metal band Skid Row, Sebastian Bach, and the godfather of Bahamian music, Ronnie Butler. Famous actors include Roxy Roker, who was also the mother of Lenny Kravitz, and legend Legendary actor Sidney Potier. There's also Bahamian supermodel Shakara Ladard, basketball players DeAndre Ayton, Buddy Heald, and Michael Thompson, as well as mixed martial artist Kimbo Slice. There are scores of famous people with homes in the Bahamas, but they aren't Bahamian per se. You can't even call them cocky Joes. What's the fun in that? You say let's jump on a bus and take a ride downtown. Bahamian cuisine often has local seafood such as fish, shellfish, lobster, crab, and conch. In fact, conch is considered the national dish. The mollusk can be found in the waters off of the Bahamas and its meat can be prepared in a number of ways. Other common ingredients in Bahamian meals include tropical fruits, rice, peas, and pork. Popular seasonings on the islands include hot pepper chilies, lime, onions, garlic, and coconut. But the most popular is likely Old Sour, a Bahamian invention made from a fermented mixture of lime juice and salt. Already with a salty and acidic flavor, hot sauce is also sometimes infused. And due to its proximity, Bahamian cuisine is somewhat related to Southern American cuisine, with common dishes such as fish and grits. Besides the Bahama Mama, the Bahamas do have some other drinks of their own, such as Switcha, which is a lemonade made with native lemons or limes and is infused with water and sugar. Goombay Punch is a commercially prepared, highly sweetened soft drink known for its pineapple taste. And finally, Duff is a Bahamian dessert dish made with fruits such as guava in a dough. The fruit is folded into the dough and boiled, then served with a sauce. Yum. Trust me, we got the power to change the 
The Bahamas is a parliamentary constitutional monarchy. A member of the Commonwealth of Nations, their king is Charles III. The current prime minister is the Honorable Philip Davis, and their political and legal traditions closely follow those of England and the Westminster system. The capital of the Bahamas is Nassau, and the country has a two-party system dominated by the center-left Progressive Liberal Party and the center-right Free National Movement. The Bahamas are considered a tax haven due to having no taxes on income, inheritance, gifts, or capital capital gains. How they can do that is explained in the economy section. In terms of the economy, the Bahamas are the third richest country in North America by GDP per capita, due in large part to tourism and offshore banking, in which it has the most offshore entities or companies in the world. Tourism as an industry not only accounts for about 70% of the Bahamian GDP, but it also provides jobs for about half of the country's workforce. The Bahamas attracts millions of visitors every year, and more than 70% of them are cruise visitors. How does the Bahamas survive without taxing its people? By taxing the tourists, of course. Makes sense to me. To show the importance of tourism, Atlantis Paradise Island is at the time of this writing the 21st largest hotel in the world and the second largest employer of the entire country. Atlantis has countless attractions, including water rides, artificial waves, and is home to 14 lagoons. And despite having a population of 400,000, the Bahamas has the seventh highest number of registered ships in the world, in large part to avoid the labor regulations that would apply if they were registered in the United States or other countries. Which leads us to... Most Bahamians or people of Bahamian descent living abroad can be found in the United States, which makes sense considering its proximity. Among the first West Indians to immigrate to the mainland USA, many went to Florida to work in agriculture or to Key West to labor in fishing, sponging, and turtling. Of the roughly 56,000 Bahamians living in the United States, about 20,000 live in or near Miami. And though most can be found somewhere in the southern United States, a large Bahamian population can be found in New York City, centered in Harlem. White Bahamian Americans in Florida were often referred to as conks. They just can't get away from that name, can they? And their communities in Key West and Riviera Beach were sometimes referred to as conk towns. Bahamians also brought with them the conk house, a style of architecture that developed in Key West in the 19th century and used into the early 20th century. Notable people with Bahamian ancestry include the aforementioned Lenny Kravitz, twin actresses Tia and Tamara Maori, Canadian basketball player and actor Rick Fox, meteorologist Al Roker, U.S. Representative Frederica Wilson, former actor and a favorite of mine, Michael K. Williams, American leader W.E.B. Dubois, whose grandfather was Bahamian, and rapper T-Pain. So let's bring the pain with the last section of the video, interesting facts that just don't fit into any other section. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. I just couldn't end this episode without mentioning that you can swim with pigs in the Bahamas. While there are a number of islands that have swimming pigs in the country, the most famous is on the uninhabited island of Big Major Key, home to the aptly named Pig Beach. The beach is home to roughly 20 famous feral pigs. If you're wondering how pigs made it to the island, you aren't the first. While there isn't a definitive answer, one legend has it that pigs were dropped off on Big Major Key by sailors who intended to come back and eat them though they never returned. Others say they survived a shipwreck and swam ashore, while it's also possible they were just put there by farmers from nearby islands. Either way, they are now visited by scores of tourists who pay good money for the chance to swim with these lovable pigs. The Bahamas are a small yet important part of our community. If you made it this far, you may as well like and subscribe to keep an eye out for other videos. I'm just getting started. Until next time, thanks for taking time out of your day to learn about our global community. Close on, close on. Stop my.